Japan was on the brink of destruction during the mid-21st century. Failed economic policies, the aging population combined with low birth rate, problem after pushed Japan to the verge of collapse. To help, powerful countries and allied powers stepped in. In the name of economic aid, medical support, and peacekeeping, each nation deployed a vast number of people, slowly expanding their territory, until finally an armed conflict arose. Later, this battle was called the Boundary War. The nations deployed humanoid war machines called AMAIM Hei Goimot Cash Don Jian La Robot. Unmanned robots with tactical AIs became the main players on the battlefield, engaging in battles all over Japan. Japan was virtually divided up and ruled, and its people fell under outside control. In the year 2061, this is Japan's current situation. Amu is with a few acquaintances, finding parts of a broken robot body. He decides to bring a part back to check and will let everyone know if it still works. On the way back, they see the foreign soldiers treating the Japanese like trash. The people don't dare to resist the military because their country is almost completely invaded. If they resist and then be killed, there is no law to claim justice for them. In this day and age, just being born in Japan is like starting a game with a huge handicap. You might be able to turn your life around if you have talent or money, but if you don't, your job options are limited. Your future is already set in stone. Amu met those three online because they all like machines. He doesn't even know if their names or addresses are real. He goes to a place of his own, which even those three don't know about. That night, on his way home, he hears someone calling for help. Although he is a bit worried, he still decides to go ahead and discover a box of something. It calls itself Guy, an autonomous AI. Basically, an AI with a consciousness. Guy realizes that Amu is suspecting that it is just a communication device and also knows that he intends to leave to avoid trouble. But anyway, Guy still needs to ask for his help because he's running out of battery. Guy tells Amu to be quiet because someone is coming. Two foreign soldiers see Amu and ask him what he is doing here. Amu replies that he has a picnic at the creek over there and he is on his way home. They say that someone's scavenging for robot parts around this area and wants to verify his ID. They even searched for his backpack but found only two water bottles. They found nothing, so they leave. Amu returns to thank Guy for his warning. Guy doesn't want his thanks, but he wants Amu to help him in return. After being begged, Amu takes Guy to an abandoned shop that used to be a maintenance shop. He chose this place as his base and built his own robot. Although it is not yet complete, it is enough to charge Guy's energy. On one occasion, Amu got lost in the mountains, and he accidentally found this place. He really liked the vibe of this rundown maintenance shop. It still had tools and testing equipment, even if they were a little old. After spending a few days entering random codes, the door was unlocked, and then he found it. It had a cockpit, which was unusual, but it had no control system equipment installed. It was bizarre. He still managed to use what parts were there and got this far. Guy says he called Amu to help because he knew Amu had machine parts in his backpack. He believed that a tinkerer wouldn't treat him so badly. Guy wants to know what Amu will do if this robot is completed. Amu said that it's just a hobby to pass the time. Guy loves this answer because people need entertainment regardless of age. Amu finishes connecting Guy to the robot and leaves. Guy then starts working on the robot's control system to repay Amu. The next day, three of Amu's friends are arrested. They are forced to reveal Amu's location. Guy calls Amu and tells him to immediately come to the maintenance shop. The soldiers go to Amu's house but couldn't find him. Guy says the military is coming here. They are here to arrest Amu on suspicion of him being a terrorist when collecting robot parts. Amu is about to surrender but Guy stops him. If he walks out of here, he's going to spend his life in prison. But if he uses it to fight, he can get out of this jam alive. After being convinced by Guy, Amu decides to use him to get out of this place. The military starts firing while Guy activates the robot. Guy begins to connect Amu's brain and body actions to control the robot. Even if the robot receives an impact, the sensor will protect his body. According to the program source, this robot's name is Kenbu. Guy shows him Kenbu's video feed through the retinal display. He also created an avatar to easily communicate with Amu. This system is like his senses connected to Kenbu, so he can easily control it with his brain. Amu jumps out, surprising the military because it is an unidentified robot. Even when they use the 30mm machine gun couldn't penetrate Amu's armor. The captain thinks it won't matter how strong the robot's armor is if they can find the pilot. However, they are also unable to locate Amu. With no other choice, they plan to use Amu's three friends to intimidate him. Guy knows they are about to use hostages, so he tells Amu to wipe them out before they can act. 
Guy instructs Amu to use the Bardich Breaker, but all he did was throw a punch and successfully destroy two enemy AI robots. Defeating two enemies gives him the feeling that he wants to save this country. Brad Watt, who is an American military captain, receives a notification that an unidentified robot has single-handedly defeated two AI robots. Meanwhile, Amu is trying to escape and not let the military find out. That night, Amu sees that the military had broadcast his wanted information. Guy edits some of the information to make it difficult for the military to find Amu. Amu doesn't know what to do from now on. Guy says that they will go through the Sido Inland Sea and head for Akeyama. The Oceanian military will back off once they are outside their territory. Then they will escape abroad. The world is a big place. There's bound to be a safe haven that they can't reach. Next morning, Guy thinks it will be very difficult to move in daylight, so he will wait until the sun goes down. So Guy will take a short break to process the data. After handling them, he will function normally. Amu uses tree branches to disguise Kenbo. He feels very hungry, so he goes around looking for food. He sees a vegetable field. He knows it is wrong to steal, but he is really hungry. As soon as he is seen by the farmer, he kneels down, begging for forgiveness, and repeatedly apologizes to him. However, the farmer doesn't punish him but asks Amu to help him harvest these tomatoes in exchange for a meal. At the end of the day, the farmer gives Amu some tomatoes and invites Amu to his house. The farmer's wife makes a meal to welcome Amu. This touches Amu, as it is his first time eating food that someone cooked for him. While he is eating, he sees the wanted news on the television. Amu is about to explain to them, but the couple says that they had a son who died while participating in the Boundary War. He had a boat with his son to go fishing, but now it is not used anymore. He didn't care what crime Amu had committed. But he was sure that Amu was a good person because Amu was willing to apologize for stealing the tomatoes. If Amu wants to stay here, he wouldn't have to worry at all. Suddenly, a policeman comes to the farmer's house. This policeman is a friend of the farmer. He is on patrol because he heard that there is a wanted terrorist. He notices a strange pair of shoes in front of the farmer's house, but he ignores it because he trusts his friend. That night, Amu receives a call from Guy. Guy knows that the policeman noticed Guy's presence, but he trusted the farmer, so he ignored it. Amu has dreamed of life as a farmer, but perhaps he would have to fulfill his dreams somewhere else. He leaves a letter and goes away because he doesn't want to affect the couple. He borrows their ship and leaves. He left a message saying that he would return this ship to them and telling them to stay healthy until he returned. But suddenly, he was discovered by the Asian military. The captain of the Asian military thinks that they can defeat the military of Oceania but will have no chance of defeating the military of Asia. The Asian military wants to destroy Amu to deter other terrorists in the world, so they will pour all their firepower on him. With no other choice, Amu has to overcome the Asian military right here. He rushes to attack and destroy the robots of the Asian military. His fight is being watched by Captain Watt. Captain Watt sees that Amu is fighting very well, but that is still not enough to defeat the Asian military. The Asian military is highly organized and never wavers. There is no way out for Amu. He is surrounded and pinned to the ground. They then fire bullets into the cockpit to kill Amu. But the pilot's cockpit is the hardest part that can't be penetrated easily. Fortunately, Amu is saved by a guy who is piloting an AI robot just like Amu. He expects six seconds to be enough to take down six robots from the Asian military. He sends a connection signal to Amu and tells him to run away while he shoots support from afar. After escaping, Amu thanks the boy and introduces herself and Guy. Guy says there's another autonomous AI on that robot. Its name is Kay. This robot is called Jogan. This guy's name is Gashin. Amu and Guy are taken by them to the terrorist space. Upon arrival, a female engineer named Misuzu comes and takes Jogan and Kenbu to the maintenance site. Risa comes to greet Amu. She takes Amu to meet her boss. He is the leader of Yadafarasu's special forces group 2, Kumai Gokin. Gokin gets straight to the point, saying that Kenbu belongs to them. One of their backers provided them with that robot. While the development concept is different, it's the same model as Gashin's Jogan. They ship the parts of Kenbu to their Shikoku branch. The plan was to send out a pilot along with the combat AI after its completion. But the Shikoku branch fell before that. They lost all communication and had no clue where it was. That's when Amu assembled and activated it. Gokin will not separate Guy and Amu. But he asks Amu to join his revolutionary army. Amu hesitates because he doesn't want to kill people. Gashin gets angry and shows him pictures of Japanese people killed by foreign soldiers. He is angry that Amu is hesitating even when he has the power to save them. Amu's hesitant attitude makes him angry and leave. Gokin says Gashin is serious about this because his father had the desire to restore Japan. But he died before he could finish. 
His father drove K before, and now Gashin inherits it. Gokan says that if Amu doesn't want to fight, they can help him get back to the civilian life. He will change his name and live elsewhere. They have connections with other organizations throughout the country to do that. Of course, he will have to return Kenbu in that case. Gokan tells him to think about the best option. As Amu is thinking, Risa comes, and she shares that her family died in a car crash. The other vehicle belongs to the Asian military. It was 90% to 100% of their fault. But in this day and age, they used their extraterritorial rights and ended up getting away with it. Somehow, they made it our fault. They even charged her for the damage caused to the military vehicle. That's why she joined the movement to take back Japan. Everyone here probably has more or less similar reasons. Amu doesn't have a reason like her or Gashin have. His parents died from an illness. It had nothing to do with the military. He was very excited when he won the first battle, but after going through the second battle, he began to fear death. Risa intends to convince Amu to join, but she changes her mind because she considers Amu as her little brother, and no older sisters want their brother to join the war. That night, Gokan sees that the Asian army is more alert, so they are temporarily inactive. If Amu doesn't join the fight, they will take back Kenbu and then replace him with another pilot. The next day, Gashin comes to find Amu and takes him for training. Meanwhile, Guy is equipped with additional weapons for the armor by Misuzu. Gashin's exercises make Amu exhausted. Over the next few days, Amu continues to train, and the people here begin to like him to the point of being willing to share their food with him. The next morning, Misuzu comes to Amu to let him know that she has completed assembling the weapons on Kenbu. She retrofitted Kenbu with a sword and a 60mm heavy caliber machine gun. Then Risa and Amu go to a stream nearby to swim. She asks about Amu's decision. Amu is still afraid to fight. But after a few days with everyone, he realizes that they are good people. He will come with them. The next day, Amu tries driving Kenbu after being upgraded. Kenbu's speed is faster than before, and his sword is also very sharp. Gashin comes and wants Amu to test drive K while he pilots Guy for a fight. Both will have to practice to be able to pilot each other's robot in an emergency. Gashin is inside Guy, while Amu is inside K. They will use fake swords and paintball guns to fight. Because they are not used to these armors, Guy's speed is slow, while K's ability to hit the target is limited. Suddenly, a mysterious robot is watching their mock fight. Meanwhile, Gashin and Amu decide to fight in close combat, and both do the best they can. The match is a draw. Gashin thinks that Guy is used to Amu's fighting style, so he constantly navigates Gashin and Amu's style. Suddenly, they discover an explosion in the base area. It turns out that the one responsible for this incident was the mysterious black robot. It attacks everyone, and Misuzu almost loses her life if Amu doesn't arrive in time. Guy warns Amu to be careful with this robot, especially its left hand. Risa comes and says she will draw its attention so they have a chance to attack. However, she paid with her life for her reckless actions. Guy tries to calm Amu, but Gashin loses his temper because of the black robot that killed his father. He rushes to attack it but is unable to penetrate its shield. On a robot training session, Gashin was piloting K while his father temporarily used a regular robot to patrol. While Gashin was training, he heard that a robot was attacking their base. When he returned to the base, he saw the black robot that killed his father. Back to the present, Amu comes to support Gashin and the two must work together to fight it. K says this black robot does not belong to any military. It goes around attacking anything it wants. Even the Asian and North American militaries have been hit. They call it Ghost. Ghost immediately rushes to pin Amu to the ground. Gashin fires bullets at it, causing it to move away. It picks up a gun in their possession and can use it without a password. K says that this is one of its special abilities. It can use any parts or weapons that are lying around on the battlefield. The two rush to attack Ghost and work together as a team, surprising Gokan. Nisuzu calls them and informs them that she brought weapons here. Gashin fires a smoke bomb to obstruct the opponent's vision. They then go to Misuzu to get the weapon. Ghost chases after them, but this time they are more confident with their own weapons. Amu rushes to cut off Ghost's left arm and asks Gashin to finish it off. Gashin immediately destroys the Ghost's head. However, Ghost can still move and use Amu as a shield, preventing Gashin from firing. Ghost pins Gashin and Amu to the ground and activates some kind of energy. Its heat is proving to be so great that it can melt everything around it. Amu and Gashin are being held tightly and can't get out. Fortunately, Gokan attacks Ghost from behind to give them a chance to escape. Gashin kicks it away, and Gokan continues to fire cannons at it. Its heat energy is so great that everyone has to leave the area. 
Gashin is furious for not being able to avenge his father, but Kay assumes that he will see Ghost again, so they don't need to risk their lives. That afternoon, Amu went back to the battlefield and found only Risa's necklace. Amu can cry now because, to him, Risa is like his older sister. That night, Captain Watt comes here and imagines the fight between Amu and Ghost. He guesses that Amu's movements have improved a lot compared to last time. Meanwhile, Gokin will arrange a psychiatrist for Amu and ask Gashin to keep an eye on him. The next morning, Kay thinks Gashin should talk to him. But Gashin says that silence is the best option now because Gashin has witnessed the death of a loved one just like Amu. After contemplating for a while, Amu decides to give up joining the Revolutionary Army because he is not brave enough to fight. Gashin doesn't force Amu to join anymore, but he asks Amu to leave Kenbu or hide Kenbu somewhere and then texts them the location. Amu admits he is afraid of death, but he is more afraid of seeing his friends die in front of him. If he joins the Revolutionary Army, he will have to witness it, so the two are no longer on the same path. Amu goes to a waterfall to hide Kenbu and takes Guy with him. Guy hacked into the database and rewrote his ID and warrant data, so Amu is free to go around. Amu goes to Reese's hometown in hopes of meeting her relatives, but it seems the house has been demolished. A man comes and asks him what he came here for. He realizes that the necklace on Amu's hand is Reese's, so he tells him to go somewhere else to chat. He says that Reese's house was destroyed by the Asian military. She had no family left, and since she joined the Revolutionary Army, the government put pressure on her family to make her relatives leave too. The man will take Amu to a place where they can tell about Risa. He takes Amu to a restaurant where the people who work there are all friends of Risa. They all miss Risa and inquire about her. When Amu shows them her necklace, everyone understands that something bad has happened to her. Risa, at that time, chose to leave for fear of affecting everyone. Amu plans to put the necklace on Risa's family grave. The restaurant owner knows the location of Risa's family grave but since it's getting dark, she tells Amu to rest here for one night. After the meal, the man and his daughter are almost hit by a car. This man is the deputy governor, and he wants the man to compensate him for spilling alcohol on his uniform. Meanwhile, Captain Watt is building three robots with the same features just like Gashin, Amu, and ghosts. He'll use them to hunt terrorists. At a cave, Ghost is repairing its damaged parts. The next morning, everyone in the restaurant is confused because the man and his child have been kidnapped by the deputy governor. They decide to go to protest because the deputy governor is not related to the Asian military. At this time, Gokin informs Gashin that the revolutionary military has just added a new member, especially this person who possesses an artificial intelligence robot like Guy and K. The deputy governor is about to sell the man and his children when he sees a group of people protesting. He has just come up with an excuse to arrest them. A girl informs the restaurant owner that everyone has been arrested on charges of rebellion. All family members will also be considered accomplices. Guy says that they will come here in five minutes. They all want Amu to run away because if they know he has served in the revolutionary army, he will surely die. The restaurant owner sends him the location of Reese's family grave and apologizes for not being able to go with him. The deputy governor decides not to sell them but to execute them so that he can be promoted. Guy has sent pictures of everyone being taken to the execution site for Amu. Anyone who resists will be shot. Amu feels that he was too cowardly to hide here. Guy encourages him to do what he wants. Amu decides to go back to Kenbu's place and activate it. Just when everyone is about to be killed, Amu appears. He destroys the guard robots with ease. Faced with overwhelming power, the deputy governor feels extreme panic. Guy has sent all the documents about the vice governor, who is trafficking people, to the world news. Captain Watt is very interested in Amu's actions. The deputy governor's superiors send a unit to destroy him and simultaneously search for and capture Amu. Amu declares that he will protect everyone and is a bit shy after he said those words. Everyone saves the man and his daughter. Amu decides to return to the revolutionary army because now he has the courage to face foreign armies. 